Hi guys, in this short video I'm going to show you uh, what your folder structure should look like in preparation for the e-learning that we are going to begin on Monday, March 30th. Um, the basic idea is you want to keep your files organized um, and you want to be able to uh, tell the difference between your various notebooks that we're going to be working on. We want to be careful that we don't just have um, a big clump of files all sitting in one place on our C drive. Um, because it might make some of these no uh, notebooks a little bit unmanageable and uh, really hard to figure out what the code that you're writing is actually doing because it's going to be hard to find the files that your notebooks are modifying or the files that your notebooks are creating. Um, so you want to make sure that you have a Python folder just like you would have had on your H drive at school. Now I'm lucky I have a school issued laptop and that laptop um, is able to access my H drive at school even though we're not at school. For you, it's very likely that your C drive is going to be your root folder where you're going to be storing all of your Python notebooks. Um, it's going to be unique to each of your own installations, so you guys will have to kind of look through and maybe create a practice notebook and see where your version of Anaconda, where your Jupyter notebooks are being saved. Um, but wherever that is, probably your C drive, um, I want you guys to create a Python folder um, wherever that, that, uh, that root folder is. Um, when you double click on your Python folder, notice that I do not have my launch notebook.bat here. Um, I'm actually going to put it back in in a minute. I, I do want it because I still have access to my H drive. But for you guys, now to run Jupyter, you're going to be going to your taskbar and launching Jupyter um, in a different way than we were at school. We weren't double, we're not double clicking a .bat file anymore. Um, anyway, what you can see is I've got um, my Chapter 6 Simulation, my Chapter 7 Open Data, Chapter 8 Metadata and APIs, Chapter 9 Web Scraping, Chapter 10 Social Media. Three of these chapters are new for you guys. You're going to want to create these folders right now. Uh, chapter 8 Metadata and APIs, we're going to start that on Monday. Um, after that, Chapter 9 Web Scraping and APIs. And if we have some time left at the end of the year, um, I might create some, uh, some extras for you guys about social media and uh, posting things to Twitter and doing some sentiment analysis um, with, uh, with some data that we can find on Twitter. But the main chapters that we need are Chapter 8, Metadata and APIs, Chapter 9, Web Scraping and APIs. Uh, let me show you guys the inside of my metadata folder as well, just so I can help you keep yourself organized. So if we open up, uh, we can see that there are five notebooks in this metadata chapter. They're self-paced notebooks. Um, they're actually kind of perfect for e-learning. This wasn't uh, done on purpose. We just we already had self-paced notebooks that you were already going to kind of work through at your own pace in class. Um, now you'll just continue that process from home. There's five of these notebooks. Um, metadata part one, two, three, four, and five. Now, uh, the other thing that I like to do is I like to create an extra folder that just says original zip files. And that's where I just kind of put those .zip files that I've downloaded from Schoology um, instead of deleting them. That way I can always access the original unchanged notebook if I ever need to, uh, to get a copy of that again without having to go on to Schoology. Um, I'm really proud of these notebooks. They took a lot, long time on the teacher end for us to create. You're going to do some really fun cutting edge stuff. Uh, we're going to do image filters again, which I know that you guys enjoyed uh, the first time we did it with JavaScript. Uh, we're going to use the Google Maps API. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff. We're going to be um, actually manipulating the individual bytes in an image file to apply those uh, those image filters. Some some so kind of some low level uh, data modifications that are that are pretty exciting with uh, the results that they produce. Um, anyway, let me go into just one of these uh, metadata uh, folders just so you can kind of see what I have going on in there. Um, so I have the IPython notebook that Mr. Nichols will have posted on Schoology for you. And then I have a couple image files. Um, these image files are uh, also downloaded from Schoology and you want to make sure that they are in the correct folder with your IPython notebook. And then the other thing to notice is I have another subfolder named output. We're going to be writing some code that is taking image files as input, modifying those image files, and creating a new image file. And to help keep you organized, the code in some of these notebooks 
directs those new files to a subfolder called output. Um, if you get an error that mentions anything about the word output, it's probably that you're missing this subfolder. Maybe you accidentally moved it, maybe you accidentally deleted it, uh, maybe somehow when you downloaded the zip file, this output folder didn't end up with, uh, with the rest of these files. So if you see any error messages referring to the word output, or if you're, you're supposed to be like creating an image file or something and it doesn't work, uh, the first thing to check is that you have a subfolder named output. And uh, to create a folder, at least in Windows, you right click, go to new, and click on folder, and that should take care of it. And you just name that folder output with a capital O, um, and that should take care of it. And you'll notice that um, even in my uh, metadata part two, I have an output folder. Lots and lots of these uh, notebooks over the, the coming weeks require a subfolder with that name. Um, even when you get start getting into web scraping and APIs, we're going to see the same thing happening. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to, uh, to cut off my video here because I think you probably get the idea. But please, please, please take a minute right now. Get your folders organized. Um, the worst thing to do is to just dump all of your Python notebooks and all of your image files and all of your output into one folder. Uh, it just makes it unmanageable trying to keep track of what you've created when you've modified it, um, which notebook is, is doing what. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys are keeping safe and staying healthy, and uh, please look out for some more, uh, some more resources from me over the coming week, and especially when we start e-learning next week. Thanks.